Good day folks, a very warm welcome to you. Yes, and welcome to the second instalment of Atari 2600 games we covered on the channel. It's a bit of a recap. Uh, they're all in the playlist there, Review Games Playlist. I think it's called, or something quite imaginative. Anyway, let's get going. It's a recap of all the Atari 2600 games covered on the channel. Uh, 51 through to 100. Soul of the Beast is our first game. It's a homebrew influenced by games, uh, well, the game Shadow of the Beast, which I played heaps on the Commodore Amiga. Uh, I didn't get too far on it, but it's a good conversion as things can go. There's a lot missing uh, that was on Shadow of the Beast, but that's to be as expected. Horizontal scroller in a mysterious land where you must defeat all evil that comes in your path. An interesting one, but a bit too big a project to actually recreate, but good to see uh, nonetheless in the homebrew scene. Uh, Tutankhamun, it's amazing game you control this guy going around a maze funny enough for a maze game you sort of blast stuff get keys go through doors and make way your escape interesting sounds i didn't own this system back in the day i was at it spectrum man so i am loving catching up with these if you want to see any of the full reviews they are in the playlist atari 2600 click on my username get to the channel page click on playlist and see the review well see atari 2600 along with a lot of other uh, systems Straight from the arcades, it's Spy Hunter, a game I played excessively on the ZX Spectrum, which wasn't the best version really, but I grew up with it, so I loved it. This one is doing quite well. The uh, Qatar 600 is doing good. It moves at a hell of a rate. A vertical scrolling uh, racing game where you... I like James Bond, but it's James Bond without the uh, Pacific license uh, from the arcades. Of course, you can uh, turn into a boat if you go down the right uh, channels. And you must go as far as you can before like, the time runs out or you lose all your lives. Get your pickup vehicle. Star Wars. Now, it's amazing that the Atari 600 was able to do that with great music as well. It's a 3D moving game set over different stages. You take on Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing. First, you must destroy these uh, TIE fighters. Uh, then there's a few other stages culminating in destruction of the Death Star. Vector graphics, who'd have thought it on the particular system, but really good to see, and I would have been bowled over for this game back in the day. Also come out as a Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, and the Commodore Amiga. Commando, a run and gun for the arcades, uh, plays very differently to any other version that I play, but there's music playing throughout the whole uh, time. It's a good example of run and guns, and one of the best ones I've seen so far on this particular uh, system. Uh, you're our commando going through enemy lines and trying to crack different um, levels and at the end there'll be a fortress for you to destroy with lots of enemies uh, coming out. Uh, plays really good, there's a few other running guns we'll be seeing uh, in this uh, compilation video. Uh, pressure cooker, interesting, you control a chef in retro gaming you can attempt anything but a different ingredients will be fired at you, you must select the right ones to complete various orders and you can knock the wrong ingredients back to where they come from with some sort of a belly blast. Uh, a tough one to get right first of all but once you get used to it you will, it is quite addictive trying to get the correct deliveries at the correct time without doing too many boo boos which will cost you time. Uh, another run and gun here, Akari Warriors. A bit of a horizontal scrolling in this as well as vertical. Uh, there's vehicles you can get in as well. I think there's a tank later on unless I'm getting mixed up with something else. Um, I prefer a commando but this, this one is good as well. Uh, yeah, because uh, some good end of level bosses here to destroy, and it's certainly doable. I uh, get the idea that you can complete this game. You've got a gun, you've got a hand grenade, but most of all, you've got different colours in that sprite there going up and down the screen. Hooray for Akari Warriors. Clacks, a bit of puzzling. You might have seen reviews of this on other systems, but the gameplay is more or less the same, although the graphics are slightly different. You've got this uh, paddle, which you must uh, collect these rectangular blue shapes and different coloured shapes there. Uh, you can hold on to them, but um, there's a grid below, and um, for any three you get in a row of the same colour, they will vanish. Uh, different um, stages, you've got to do different things, it might be like uh, uh, five lines, six lines, uh, diagonals and all that sort of stuff you need to do, but queue that up and you'll be racing through. Video chess, yes it's chess. Uh, wouldn't be any uh, computer system without a game of uh, chess. Uh, it's not using too much of the screen here, which is uh, one complaint. It's a little bit diddly, but you, if you're into chess and had an Atari 2600, this is an obvious thing to uh, do. Uh, the computer AI is not too bad. Uh, you can play it on different levels, but the, the, the pieces aren't solid, which is a bit of a letdown there. But anyway, and there's mini games in there as well for some reason.
Hmm. A miniature golf. Now, this is very retro. It hasn't aged particularly well. But uh, using this blue square uh, as it's like lining up the ball, we can select our power and we're going to blast this uh, green ball, although it does uh, vary. Uh, to the hole. It's like an arcade sort of golf. There's obstacles going backward and forward as you can see from that magenta box if you get the idea. But they don't make games like this anymore and probably for a good reason. But classic retro uh, stuff. This system is from the 70s, you know. These games are from the 80s. Another run and gun for you. Uh, front line moves a bit quicker uh, than Akari Warriors and Commando. And, um, you know, I completed this on my first or second go, so it's not particularly um, difficult uh, there. But if you want something easier, and Commando or Akari Warriors was frustrating you, then this might be the one to get. Or if you're into running guns in general, yes, get this one. It's lesser known than Commando and Frontline, but uh, a worthy comparison too. The stages are different enough from those other two games. Uh, here's another gold game. This time you've got the guy on the, on the screen doing the swing. It's a little bit more tricky than miniature golf, but it tries to be more of a simulation there. Here we are on the putting green. Uh, I don't know why he's got his stick up that high, but there we go. Uh, am I going to get it? Am I going to get it? No, he missed it with a swipe, and that counts as a shot, I think. There we go. It's in. Kaboom. It's golf. It's proper golf. It's not imaginatively named, but it is golf nonetheless. Uh, you could have played this a lot on your own. Uh, Dark Caverns is a pretty good uh, May sort of game. My favourite ones of these is the Alien. Uh, there we use like a Pac-Man sort of clone, but this is uh, the similar sort of thing. We've got this guy running around the screen, uh, collecting bits and pieces, collecting guns and trying not to get uh, killed. Good stuff, good stuff. It's one of the ones to get, I think, if you own the system. If you thought Pac-Man was a little bit too generic for you, then here's one instead. Dark Cavern. It's not that dark, but anyway, uh, the graphics are quite smooth. Uh, boxing. A uh, very, very basic game. It's you against a computer or a player tool. I uh, get points for any uh, hit, uh, double points for long range hitting, and it just goes on and on until the, uh, the person gets the, well, so 99 or at least a high score, or the time sort of like uh, ticks down there. You're the white one, you're fighting the darker coloured one, and it's boxing. There's not too many boxing games, but this is maybe one of the earliest ones that exist. Citation needed. Straight from the arcades, we're looking at Joust here. This is the first Joust game I actually played, which... Um, um, set me on playing other ones on different uh, systems but this is pretty good uh, it does basically what Joust does the graphics are a little bit flickery but not a great deal and the controls are quite nice to play so it's instantly playable if you're used to Joust in the arcades this one will be uh, you know uh, give you a fair representation of what that game was. Different stages, uh, joust the other ostriches, don't get killed yourself, you win by um, there. Here we go, Spider Fighter, what a name that is, Spider Fighter. You're a spider and you're fighting other stuff uh, to collect fruit for some unknown reason. Uh, maybe it's aliens versus some sort of like um, polytunnel fruit patch, but it, it, it's, it's quite good. Um, the gunfire as you can see, moves left and right as well after you fire it. It was a little bit odd, but there are quite a lot of shooters on the um, Atari 2600, and this has got those great earthly sounds, which I've come to expect, so I could recommend this one. Um, fast Eddie, a platformer there. Here comes Eddie. He must collect various uh, hearts or shapes that uh, turn up on the screen from one to uh, another. And then once we've got enough, we can collect that key, which is held by this silly Wally up the top there, and then it's on to the next stage. Biff, there you go, and that's that one done. It's Eddie he's first uh, so respect what he has to say a really nice game classic game none of these have aged particularly well here we are collecting fish but it's all about nostalgia if you had these games back in the day or even if you're a story and looking at retro gaming this is a system to definitely look at River Raid 2 uh, from Activision I prefer River Raid 1 that had it going on this isn't really a river it seems like a great expanse of sea and occasionally one of us um, I think land unless I get it mixed up with the third one which is an unofficial release which will come to uh, soon so you know if you like River Raid want more of a challenge it's River Raid 2. You sort of like know what you're going to get. You need to refuel. You don't want to crash into anything. And you want to survive as long as possible. But River Raid 1 for the win, really. Uh, no, look no further. Pengo, another arcade conversion uh, there. Uh, push blocks out of the way. Flatten all these sort of guys and unlock stuff. And that's it. The mu music on this one will drive you quite insane. It will drive you utterly crazy. It's probably going to drive you crazy even this 30 seconds bit of footage that I'm going to show you now. As I said before, if you want to see the full review, uh, it's nonsense gameplay, Nincompoo chat, and the channel doesn't take it too, too seriously. 
as we straight and burst. Carnival, another arcade uh, shooter uh, type one. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. That keeps the channel uh, going. These videos take a little bit longer uh, to put together. So I hope you appreciate it. It's like an index to the channel. Just recapping where we've come uh, so far. Uh, there's a few different versions of this game with different names on other systems. But this one is fairly solid. I only got quite bored of it quite quickly as a kid. But there you go. It does essentially what it says on the tin. Pepsi Invaders, this is a reskin of um, Space Invaders. There wasn't too many of these uh, about, so I'm not quite sure how much this is worth. It uh, might be worth a pretty penny. It was given to executors of, um, or workers of the uh, Pepsi Cola uh, in some sort of conference somewhere. So many of them might not have played it or even thrown it away or given it away. So it wasn't actually given to actual, necessarily, to a solid gamers. Instead of the Space Invaders coming down, it's the Pepsi sign. And at the top there, uh, it says, um, uh, Coke wins. It might have been the Pepsi, it might have been Coke they gave it to. It's Pele Soccer. Uh, soccer doesn't get too much more basic uh, than this, but you control three players who always stand equidistant from each other. Uh, two defenders and a striker. And you just boot this square ball. Hope it doesn't cut my feet into the goal. But different times, it's got the, um, well, it's got the license of Pele, but there was a, another version that didn't have the license of Pele, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And it's a goal! Yay! And a nice nice um, celebration of it. Pigs in Space from The Muppet Show. Pigs in Space. Three basic games you can play. You don't have to play them all in any particular order. But this is my favourite one uh, where you're going up in this ship. It looks a bit like a vase with a funny face on it through these actual caverns while these gonzo sort of alien creatures are firing at you. It's a nice fun game and uh, kids who are fans, uh, are fans of the Muppets would get quite a good fun out of this. So, uh, some games are easier than uh, others there but it's got some good bits to it. Gauntlet, not to get confused with Gauntlet from the arcades. This is more akin to a temple run which comes much much later on phones and apps. But you've got this guy with a silly hat on and he must run and run and run on this forever versatile scrolling screen uh, jumping over stuff and not getting getting a hit. Uh, the longer you go, the more points you get. Here he goes. Run, run, run. How far can you potentially get? Good stuff. I was addicted to Temple Run back in the day, and this one, yeah, it's got elements to it, although it's 2D rather than 3D. Gauntlet. Let's get you through that other Gauntlet game. Uh, Gremlins, based on the movie Gremlins. It's two stages, but uh, both both of them uh, involve you catching, like, um, mogwise or these gremlin creatures who will try and eat hamburgers and stuff. The first one, it's the, uh, the nice gremlins. The next one, it's the horrible gremlins in a different sort of, like, guise. It's interesting. It'll keep you entertained for a little bit if you was a child. But as an adult, I'm not quite sure how much longer it would go. Here's the second stage here. And this one involves shooting the terrible gremlins because they've either been fed after midnight or they've got a bit wet. River Raid 3, this is a homebrew, so it's an un unofficial um, uh, River Raid sort of like game. But again, it's uh, a similar in vain to more or less the uh, second one. Instead of a river, it seems like there's a big ocean we're going over, and why not? I'm glad it exists. I think the, uh, the outlet that done this are from Brazil somewhere. So they're obviously River Raid fans and want to get more um, uh, mileage out of it. So it's a sequel that didn't really need to happen. But again, it's got some nice touches to it the others didn't offer. The background changes colour every now and again. Uh, Battle Zone from the arcade. It's the only game of Battle Zone that I know is not uh, polygons, but it plays quite well. Uh, if you're not familiar with Battle Zone, you're a tank going through the enemy territory. We must locate enemy uh, tanks and blow them up before they blow us up. You've got this radar on the, uh, the top middle there, which will help you guide where the enemies are. Uh, you've got to keep on moving, or else you get blown up quite quickly. And there we go, I've got blown up there to uh, Kaboom Town. Biff, it does feel quite pleasing. Uh, Canyon Bomber, a little bit confused in this. It's you against the computer, and you must basically score more points by dropping your bombs and destroying all these things below. Man, it's a little bit confusing. It's not um, okay on the eyes. Probably best uh, in a two-player with a human player to play against, as a lot of these were. As soon as all the blocks are destroyed, whoever's got the highest score is declared the winner, and that's about it, really, and you can fight it out amongst yourselves. We go to arcade territory now, Centipede, uh, there. Uh, you control this, well, in a lot of versions it's a, it's like a, a, a snake down the screen, but then we must um, shoot the all the uh, elements of the uh, Centipede body coming down the screen. Uh, on the arcade version, they are mushrooms there. Here they are like horizontal lines, but it's, it's good fun. It sure moves fast, and uh, it's a good representation of what Centipede uh, was. did have a, a sequel called Millipede, so wait for 
for it, wait for it, wait for it. It's a millipede. It gives you everything the centipede do does, but it's a bit more refined. There's a few more bells and whistles here. Uh, for a few different enemies, you've got the spider and uh, the flea. Uh, you've got different colours when the screen changes when you complete all the um, all the body shots. Millipede. Um, you know, it's, it's a slight expanse over um, uh, centipede there. So that's a little bit more exciting. Uh, there's enough different, I think, uh, to warrant the purchase if you had said to be before. Gyrus. Now, this is game's absolutely amazing. It's one of those games where I think, how the well did it happen on the Atari 2600? The music is good. The speed it does no slowdown, considering that. But your ship moves in this like circular motion uh, around all their enemies coming at you. Avoid getting shot and take all of them out. Not to dinner, as we always see. Kaboom! I first played this on the Commodore 64, I think. But uh, this this is great. This is a must-have if you owned an Atari 2600 Gyrus. What a quality game that is. Mousetrap, a maze game influenced by uh, Pac-Man. Again, like Pac-Man, you must collect all these uh, pellets there. But what makes it different is by selecting um, different controls, you can open and close gates uh, there. So try and plan your attack uh, while these cats try and attack your mouse. If you get uh, a certain power-up, you can turn into a dog and, um, well, chase all the cats away. It's a nice one. I still prefer... There they go. There's a dog. It's a nice one. I still prefer uh, Pac-Man. This is a good variant of it. And this came out in the arcades as well. Yars Revenge, a very popular game. It featured in a lot of people's top tens who own the system there. Uh, we must um, power up uh, uh, the, the ship by um, collecting those uh, side pods there against the aliens. And then uh, shoot from the other side to take them out. If you didn't uh, know, have this game back in the day or had no instructions, it might seem a little bit confusing. But it is a nice game nonetheless. And that thing down the middle gives it its own super vibe. Kabiff. There we go. That's him destroyed. Qbert, another arcade conversion, 3D. This was to influence uh, a huge amount of games there. But controlling Qbert, uh, jump on the uh, squares or the top of the cube to change to different colour. Once you've done all of that, it's on to the next stage. There's some handy lifts either side, which in the review I wasn't quite aware of what they were for. Uh, that you can teleport to the top of the screen or get a lift to the top of the screen to avoid enemies if they get you in a tricky spot. Different colour squares for each level, but the game play remains uh, more or less the same. Uh, Skydiver, quite a basic game here, but you collect points uh, depending on uh, how accurate you land on these bases. Once two players again, um, you have more fun against a human player rather than the um, uh, computer. But here I go, you get scored out of 10 depending on uh, when you release the um, parachute. I think you get slightly higher points if you release earlier or later. One of the two. There we go. Biff. So the idea is to score as high as possible uh, there. Uh, space Jockey, another space fighter. You can take the part of the aliens this time, trying to destroy uh, Earthlings. Here they come with our helicopters. There's lots of nice colours and vibrant sounds. It's a no-nonsense horizontal scroller shooter, which mo moves really well, sa uh, sounds really well too. There's different modes of play. And I was a big fan of this one, Space Jockey. I think it was played due to a recommendation. I wouldn't have known about it. Otherwise, every time I get a recommendation, I do write them down and eventually I will come to them eventually. Doctor Who, Dalek Invasion. This is a reskin of the original release of Berserk from the arcades. This time you play, uh, I believe it's the Tom Baker version of Doctor Who, so the fourth Doctor. And instead of uh, shooting robots, uh, you're shooting these um, Dalek things. But other than that, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's a random screen each time you come across it. Whenever there's a Doctor Who game, it always seems to be uh, the Daleks that you're uh, fighting. So long may that uh, continue. Oh, how Doctor Who and his Dalek people. This one's called Kaboom. Um, it's a little bit different to the arcade uh, game. But this, this uh, naughty uh, villain guy at the top is dropping bombs. And we must catch them on our little tables here. If we miss one, we lose a table until they've all uh, virtually gone. I think they're tables or traps. Gets quicker and quicker. You can control this via a paddle. I'm doing it by the mouse here. So a paddle is probably um, a little bit better for a bit of speed. If you're doing it on keyboard, you're going to be in big trouble. Big nose. Uh, it's Road Blaster. It's a uh, homebrew. I suppose influenced by games like Spy Hunter, but more often the, a, a game called Road Blaster, which we've seen in a 3D or Road Blasters. Uh, avoid the enemy. Uh, collect health when you see it. Don't bump into them. Yes. As uh, soon as you're dead, you're dead. And uh, that goes for any sort of like game, really. 
Uh, unless it's a game about the afterlife, which I immediately can't think of one. So it moves quite fast, but it's, it's pretty tricky. Uh, there's not much variety in it, but it's okay. Vanguard, a horizontal scholar shooter, which sure looks nice due to the rainbow colours it uses there. Uh, different modes of play. First of all, you've got this vertical scrolling shooter bit. Uh, nice music playing, then it goes into a vertical scrolling shooter bit, either up or down. Yeah, I, this music would inspire a kid's amazing imagination, and you do feel that you're actually getting somewhere on this. There's different ships to shoot via each stage, and if you go right the way round, uh, it will get a little bit quicker each time. Energy there, energy bar on the bottom. Fatal Run, it's a post-apocalyptic world and we're delivering some sort of uh, medicine to different cities, but there's guys on the road trying to stop us, but that's irrelevant. It's a racing game and it moves quite smooth. Um, zip through the uh, people in front there to knock them off the road or destroy their um, uh, cars, but they will be destroyed, trying to destroy you as well. And each day you come out in a city and you deliver the medicines to them. Uh, really nice, I think. A xenophobe, influenced by the movie uh, Alien. You control this guy here, uh, trying to rid all space stations of aliens, trying to get to the next stage. I think it's split screen in two play if someone else is there, I think. You can see Xenophobe just going up and down, or maybe it isn't. Watch the review, I'll probably give you more information there. Did I tell you it's dodgy gameplay nonsense, Jack? Well, we're playing for a laugh, and this is just a recap in the good old Index page. Hooray for us! Do check out other compilations, there are a few. Frostbite, uh, this guy is uh, in the North Pole, or the South Pole, and he's jumping up and down on these levels to turn them a different colour, I suppose a bit like you, but once he's got enough uh, there, for each one it builds a bit of an igloo uh, up the top there, when he's got the full uh, house, then we can get in that, and it's the end of the stage, and you build a bit of an igloo every time you make one of these things go a different colour. You see the igloo's building, it's building baby. Uh, later on there'll be bears up the top there to try and hinder your progress. Uh, Mega Mania, now this is another good shooter where you're controlling a, um, the Starship Enterprise. Uh, it's, it's not as good as some of the others in this um, compilation, but it's, it, it's fair play, it's of an era, it does quite well, and it's a nice name, Mega Mania. Star Trekking across the universe, boldly going forward, but this isn't licensed, so we might have to go in reverse. Good, kaboom! Mega Mania, not Mini Mania, this is Mega Mania. Turmoil, not to get confused with the ZX Spectrum game Turmoil, it's completely different. It's a shooter, you control this central ship going down this um, column here. Uh, by going left and right, you must blow up everything or enough stuff until it progresses to the uh, next uh, stage. There'll be bonus stuff to get by flying along the caverns at a certain point. But uh, it moves fast, there was a Commodore 64 conversion of this which didn't go in its own way, which was which was, which was pretty terrible. There we go, I've got that for bonus points, or did I? I didn't, I ran out of time. You've only got a certain amount of time to do that, but a nice shooter, a no-nonsense one. Demons to Diamonds, I felt like I was tripping a little bit when I was playing this game. It's on a green background. When you shoot these aliens, they turn into a diamond, if you shoot them in the right, the right way. Uh, then you've got to shoot the diamond and it's on to the next stage. It seems like some weird dream that shouldn't exist. There's no other game quite like this. Demons to diamonds. Why? I don't know. I'd like to see the, the thought processes or the meeting which come up with this. But I believe, I'd imagine, I'm guessing now, that heavy drugs may have been involved. It's crazy. Mountain King. Now this is good. You don't see games quite often like this on Tire 600. And that is because it's scrolling. It, if you go over one side of the map, it will scroll back onto it so it's continuous, but you're in a pyramid and you must find a key uh, to unlock something or other uh, and then take it to the top of the pyramid and then uh, there. Uh, there's a big spider down the bottom of this thing, so if you fall down and get caught by that, it will entwine you and it's doomsville for everyone. Yes. E.T. The Extraterrestrial. This was uh, quite a notorious game, but it's a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. It's no worse than a lot of games in this uh, combination. Apparently too many of these were made and they were buried along with a number of other games. But, you know, when I'm playing it, it's not it's not overly hideously bad. It's, uh, it's got some concept, but E.T. must collect three parts of some telephone uh, so then he can call home and get rescued. He falls down these pits a lot, I'd have to say, but there's a question of um, levitating your way out of there, and people, some people might not have known how to levitate but stuck in the pit all the time. Frogs and Flies, another one of these one to two player games, better with a human player, but anyway, it gives you a full um, day to night cycle here. This is, you get extra points, or point every time you catch one of these flies, you know, who's got the highest score at the end is the winner, and that's it. 
So if you ever wanted to be a frog on a lily pad, trying to eat as many flies as you can, competing against another frog on a lily pad, then this is the one for you. It's Lily Pad City, and I can't really think of any other frogs on lily pad games. You might do. Amadar, what a classic this is, which inspired another load of games. It's from the arcades and arcade conversion. Basically, like Batman, you must ring all of the uh, areas, uh, get that all cornered off, avoid the uh, nasties there, as soon as you've done that. That's good. I do have a look at Potty Painter on the ZX Spectrum, which was influenced uh, by uh, this one. I think we're playing some kind of monkey person, but you know, go around the whole maze and there'll be more enemies or quicker enemies the further you get into this game. So really, really nice. So yeah, hope you liked having a look at that. There was a, so we've reviewed 100 Atari 2600 uh, games now, so that's a, that's a fair number. I think there might have been more or less 600 or maybe slightly more games i'm not quite sure you might want to double check that but i'm not sure we'll review all of them but this was definitely them so yeah thank you for watching that uh, again i hope there's a trip down a memory uh, lane for you there please subscribe if you haven't already that keeps the channel going and thank you for your support there marvelous so till next time take great great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye goodbye